Uh, this morning I want to talk about something really important, uh, and it's called how to embrace your true calling. How to embrace your true calling. Most people that I know, that I talk with, they're looking for a greater sense of meaning and purpose for their life. In fact, one of the big questions people ask is, is what is the purpose of life? There was a study that Barna did that said if you could ask God any question, what would it be? The first one was, why do you allow suffering? Uh, the second was, what's the meaning of life? Uh, what's the purpose of life? And especially in times of change or crisis, uh, we're going through this global pandemic and uh, your regular routines are upended. Many have lost their job. Their uh, kids haven't been able to go to school and not able to go to church. You're stuck at home. Uh, many have lost their employment, and there causes us to question, what am I really doing with my life? Leaves us with this lingering sense that there must be something more to life than what I'm currently experiencing, and it gets us looking in other areas for a greater sense of meaning and purpose for our life. The problem is that our culture often gets us looking in all the wrong places. I don't know if you've noticed that our culture encourages us to look to work or profession for a sense of purpose and calling in life. For many, work has replaced religion as the primary source of meaning and significance in their life. Our work largely becomes how we define ourselves. Think about it. When you meet a new person, what's one of the first questions you ask them? What do you do, right? Because in our culture, work has become the primary source of meaning and purpose. And if we want to get to know someone, we want to know what's meaningful or purposeful about their life, we're going to ask, what's the work that you do? Work is no longer about providing for your needs, but finding meaning and purpose for your life. It's no longer about income, it's actually about identity. And so the goal for most people is to land that dream job, to find something that they love doing every day, that they're passionate about, that feels significant. The problem is that if your job is less than satisfying or you've lost your job, then you lose your whole sense of purpose and meaning and identity in life. And so in this time of, of crisis where so many people are unemployed, the culture then shifts the focus from work to a cause or an issue, a social issue, as a meaningful sense of calling and purpose in your life. And it causes, if, if a cause becomes your calling, then your identity is wrapped up in that issue. And what you'll see, and you see it played out on Facebook all the time, if, if someone doesn't support your sense of calling, your sense of cause, you feel like they don't support you. And worse, if they oppose your cause, they, it feels like they're opposing you and, and you become adversaries with each other. The lines get drawn in the sand, defenses go up, and relationships get torn down. I don't know if you've seen this on Facebook, this trend I'm noticing, totally unhealthy. And unfortunately, it's among a lot of Christians that I know. They're saying, they're, they're starting off these posts, if you don't agree with blank, then just go ahead and unfriend me right now. And what they're saying is, my cause is so much a part of my identity that if you don't agree with my cause, you are against me, so you're not my friend. And it's because our culture is shifting our focus away from what it really needs to be. Now, having a job you love or a cause you champion is not a bad thing. They're great things. It's just not your calling. It can never give you the sense of meaning 
and purpose in life that you're longing for, right? That's why so many people have that midlife crisis because they get a significant way through their career and they realize this isn't going to do it. I'm not going to hit that apex. I'm not going to achieve those goals. I'm not going to find that level of success that I was thinking would bring all this meaning and purpose to my life. So where do we go? I've got good news for you today. God's word shows us how to embrace our true calling. Let me explain. First, we need to embrace a biblical understanding of our calling. This is one of the biggest problems I see today is that people have lost a biblical understanding of what it means to have a calling and they've replaced it with a worldly cultural understanding whether it's work or a, a role in life or a cause that they champion and that's not what the Bible says we need God's help to truly understand and embrace our calling Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verses 6 through 19 Paul's praying, and he prays that God would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of our calling. Paul prays that, he says, you need God to strengthen you to give you a spirit of wisdom and understanding that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened, that the light bulb would go on in your heart, and that you would come to know what is the hope of your calling, this eager expectation that God has a calling on your life. And so I want to stop right now before we go any farther, because I don't want this just to be an intellectual exercise. I want to pray for you right now that God would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the light bulb would go on in your heart today, and you will go, I get it, I finally understand what the hope of my calling is. So would you bow your hearts with me right now? to pray for God to work a miracle in your understanding right now. Father, I pray for everyone that's listening right now, everyone that's watching or listening to the podcast or catching this at a later date, I pray, God, right now by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would work a miracle in their heart, that you would break down uh, fortresses of deception that the devil has built up around their hearts. We would, that you would tear down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of you, that you would cause the light to go on, that people that have wrapped up their identity, they're so emotionally committed to certain things that all of those hindrances, all of those barriers, all those things that bind them up and would keep them from understanding their calling in you. I, I pray that today you would pull all of that away. You would cause the light to go on in their heart. That at the end of this message, after looking at these scriptures, they would go, oh, I get it. And that it would fuel not the rest of their lives, but all eternity. You would do something powerful and extraordinary right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what does the Bible say about the hope of our calling? What is our calling? Well, simply our calling is primarily to be in a personal relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We are called to be in a relationship with God above everything else. I know you're going, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. But do you get that as the primary goal for all of life? This is the single most important truth to embrace in every waking moment, in every single activity, in every one of your endeavors. This is the single greatest truth that must be embraced for your life. The only way to miss your calling is to miss 
having a personal, dynamic, genuine relationship with God. If you are missing a sense of calling, it all goes back to your relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.9, write that down. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful who has called us into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at that. God is calling us to fellowship with Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's our calling. There is no example in the Bible of anyone ever being called to a job or employment. We're not called to activity. We're called to relationship, and that relationship then informs all of our activity. If we don't embrace this, we will never embrace our true calling. Our calling is primarily to be in a relationship with God. Do you get it? Does that light bulb boom go off in your heart that that's it? That's the purpose of life? To be in a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ? Is that like, that's all I've got to focus on? That's what I've got to put my time and energy and effort into? Do you get it deep in your heart today? I'm afraid that so many Christians get it up here, but they never get it right here. And so it never provides the motivation to live their life with that as their sense of calling. And they still, even though they know the truth, they've heard the truth, they never come to a heart knowledge of the truth. And so they still live this life of chasing this illusion that meaning and purpose can come from something else. Our calling is not just primary. It's also permanent. It's permanent. It doesn't change. Hear me on this. Your calling does not change with age or life stage. Romans 11.29 says the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. It means they can't be taken away. All right? That means as your, your kids, if you're, a, if you're a stay-home mom and your kids grow up and move out of the house and you're an empty nester, your calling doesn't change. If you were a CEO of a company that went bankrupt and you lost your job, your calling hasn't changed. Whether you're a a kid in junior high or a senior citizen living in an assisted living care facility, your calling has not changed. We can live out our calling if we're unemployed or working in a job we don't like. A A woman who chooses to stay home with her kids hasn't given up on her calling just because she's put her career on hold. I hear so many people that think that, right? If I say, I'm going to give up my calling. No, you're giving up employment. Your calling is something permanent that can't be changed. It can't be taken away. It can't be altered. We need to embrace this biblical understanding of our calling that it is primarily to be in a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ and that is something that is permanent and never changes no matter what age or life stage you're in. Secondly, we need to embrace an identity that flows out of our calling. i say that again. We need to embrace an identity that flows out of our calling. The biblical calling, when the Bible talks about calling, it's always referring to identity rather than activity. Your identity, your calling is not so much what you do, it's who you are. 1 Peter 2.9, listen to this. You are 
Not you do. It says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him, get this, who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Your calling is about who you are in Christ Jesus. This is so powerful. It is so freeing if you can embrace this today. Your identity is a gift you are given when God calls you to himself. There are so many people, and it breaks my heart, there are so many people that are living with a false pressure to succeed or a crushing sense of failure for not having succeeded in the ways they think they need to because they feel like their identity is wrapped up in the success of their work the success of their career and if their career is not going right they feel like they're not right or that their identity is in how their kids are growing up and how well they're doing. They, are my kids doing exceptional in school? And are they behaving well? Or are they an embarrassment to me? And, and, and all these things that if my kids aren't doing all the right things, then I must be a bad parent. If that's your thinking, if you put that kind of pressure on yourself, your identity is not coming out of your calling in Christ. It's coming out of your own effort. And the Bible calls calls that works. You've been set free from that in Christ Jesus. Your, your identity doesn't depend on how successful you are. It doesn't depend on how cool your career is. It doesn't depend on how great an education you got. It doesn't depend on how well your kids turn out. It doesn't depend on whether your marriage is happy or struggling. Your identity is in none of those things. It's in Jesus Christ alone. It is a gift from God that can never be taken away. So many parents I talk to, even when their kids are grown, if they feel this pressure that if their kids aren't making, continue to make the right decisions, oh, I must have failed them somehow. Take, give that up. That's not your identity. That was a responsibility that you had for a season. And whether you did great with that responsibility or you struggled with that responsibility or whether you're currently struggling with that responsibility, it is not your identity. It is not who you are. It does not define you today. It will not define you in heaven for eternity. You're not going to get to heaven and God's going to say, okay, all the bad parents over here in Slumville, all the great parents, here's your mansion. It doesn't work like that. Your identity is in Christ. Your value's in Him, not in your accomplishments. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 says, He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. He says, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's it. Walking humbly with God is the key to embracing your identity. Ephesians 1 tells us that our identity is found fully in Jesus. It says, in him you're blessed, you're chosen, you're adopted as a child of God, you're fully accepted, you're redeemed, you're forgiven, you're empowered, and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's who you are. Is that how you see yourself today? When you get up in the morning, are your thoughts, I am a child of God, I'm blessed, I'm chosen, I'm redeemed, I'm empowered, I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit, I'm fully accepted by God today. Is that your identity? Is your identity flowing out of your calling in Christ Jesus. And if it does, then your identity never changes. If it's all wrapped up in what you do, your identity is like a roller coaster. So first, we need to embrace a biblical understanding of calling. It is not your work, it's not your role, it's not your causes, 
It's your relationship with God. That's what God calls us to. That's our biblical calling. And then we need to embrace an identity that flows out of that calling, that who I am is a child of God. I'm a son of the king. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a special treasure to God. I'm a, a royal priesthood. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I've got an eternity marked out for me with a loving heavenly father. That's who we are. And then finally, we need to embrace an approach to life that is worthy of that calling. Our primary responsibility in our calling is to, in essence, make the most of that calling. That's what it means to walk worthy of that calling. 2 Thessalonians verse one, chapter 1, verse 11 says, Paul says, we keep on praying for you, asking God to enable you to live worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all good things your faith prompts you to do. I love this verse. There are so many truths packed in this verse. May he ena God enable us to live a life worthy of his calling. May he give us the power to accomplish all all the good things that our faith prompts us to do. God's the one who enables us to walk worthy. We just need to rely on him. This is not, uh, walking worthy is not about trying harder. It's about trusting more. We live out our calling as we walk with God. And when we get this, our calling, we see our calling as what gives meaning to our work. Meaningful work no longer is our calling. Do you get the distinction? So many people are looking for meaningful work as their calling. But it's actually your calling and your identity that gives meaning to what you do. And then everything we do is just an outworking of our calling. Whether you're a business owner, a Starbucks barista, a missionary, or a stay-at-home mom, our calling is the same, and we share the same identity. We just work it out in different spheres of influence. I used to think that, you know, you had to be a missionary or in full-time ministry to really be living out your calling. And I've come to realize it's so wrong because I've met so many missionaries and so many people in ministry that are not living out their God-given calling. They're, they've just made ministry a spiritual form of work and they're just like secular people looking to find their identity in what they do. You can be a pastor, a missionary, uh, a deacon in the church, an elder, and miss your calling and identity if you think that what you do is what's meaningful. It's who God has made you in Christ Jesus that makes your life meaningful. And then wherever you go, whatever you do, you bring meaning and purpose and significance to that because you're bringing the kingdom of God into that because of who you are in Christ Jesus. And then you'll begin to realize it doesn't matter if you're in a job you hate. It, is, it can still be a place of meaning and significance and purpose because it advances the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter whether Paul was in prison, whether he was shipwrecked, whether he was walking down the road, whether he was preaching the gospel, whether he was making tents. It was all part of him working out his calling and all of it was filled with meaning you look at the life of jesus it doesn't matter who he talked to what he did uh where he went it was he was always bringing the kingdom of god to bear on all those circumstances so it doesn't matter if you're a stay-home mom with infants or a ceo of a, a billion dollar corporation your calling is the same 
And you can live just as meaningfully and significant a life. You can walk worthy of that calling no matter what your station in life. There is no station in life that has a higher sense of calling than being a child of God. And every station in life can bring glory to God if we embrace our calling. If we embrace an identity that flows out of that calling and we embrace a life approach that's worthy of that calling. And we're going to, actually next week, we're going to look in depth at how to walk worthy of your calling. What it means to make the most of being called to be a child of God in the exact place God has you right now. If you want to see your life explode in meaning and significance, check out next week's message because we're going to do a deep dive in how to walk worthy of our calling. And as we wrap it up today, I want to ask you to do two things. First, let's take a moment of personal reflection. Maybe pull out a journal or a piece of paper you haven't gotten one of our prayer journals come on saturday night we'd love to give you a prayer journal uh come next saturday we, we'd love to give you one you can start tracking this journey with god but take a moment and think about your own sense of calling is your sense of calling primarily tied to your relationship with god Take a moment and, and be honest. Do you see being in a relationship with God as the paramount thing of your life? Is this the all-encompassing, all-consuming purpose of your life? Or have you been looking for it in work? Have you been looking for meaning and significance in a cause that you feel you have to champion? Are you looking for it in a role that you have in your family or society? Is your calling, do you see your calling? Has the light bulb in your heart gone off? And this is the purpose for your life to be in a relationship with God? It's just an honest question. Be honest with yourself about it. And then ask yourself, is this my main sense of identity? Is this my main sense of identity? That I am a child of God, a member of his household, that I'm blessed, chosen, forgiven, redeemed, accepted, empowered, sealed with the Holy Spirit. Do you see yourself as a royal priesthood, a special treasure to God? Do you see yourself as his masterpiece, a work of art, poetry in motion because of Jesus in you? Is that how you view yourself? Or you still feel like a failure because you haven't succeeded at work? Or maybe you have succeeded and you think, you're better than, than sliced bread and, and you're the, the greatest thing on the planet and you're better than other people. Both of those are wrong because they miss this eternal identity in Christ that can never be taken away, that is good forever. And ask yourself, are you living in a way that's worthy of that calling and identity. How's your attitude been lately? Has your attitude been worthy of being a child of God? 
Has it been worthy of being chosen and accepted and beloved by God? What about the way you've been treating other people? Or how much of a servant you are, your conversations or your Facebook posts? Have those been worthy of this great calling and identity you have in Christ? And if you're like me and you got to an answer on some of those, no, no, it hasn't been. And I want to encourage you, and I'm going to lead you in a time of prayer this morning, just encourage you just to tell God you're sorry. And to, again, ask Him to open the eyes of your understanding that you would know what is the hope of your calling. And you would live with that sense of hope and eager expectation that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine, not because of your ability or your effort or your intelligence or your education or your wealth and, and finances and resources or connections, but because of His great power and glory which He's displayed in Jesus Christ, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead that God wants to be available in you to show his glory to the world that is so desperately in need of that kind of hope. So as we think about our own sense of calling, let's go to the Lord with what he's shown us. And let's pray and let's repent. And so just bow your hearts with me right now, wherever you are. If you're driving, don't have to close your eyes and bow your head. That wouldn't be good. But wherever you are, just bow your heart in reverence before God. And pray, Father, I'm sorry for neglecting my true sense of calling. I'm sorry for trying to find my identity in something other than my relationship with you. And I'm sorry that I've been living so far short of that calling and identity, so far off track from that. God, my life in many ways is about me. It's not about you. I haven't been living with you at the center of everything. And so, Father, I pray that today you would open the eyes of my understanding. That you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation to see the things I haven't been seeing, to see it in ways I haven't been seeing it, to see it in areas of my life that it's not a part of yet. Help me see how my calling and my identity impact every area of my life. And help me to walk worthy of that calling. I need your help. In Jesus' name, amen. So be sure to check out next week's message. We're going to be looking at how to make the most of your calling, how to walk worthy of this calling. We're going to look at real practically how that works out in every relationship, every endeavor, every activity. And I think it's just going to hopefully just blow your mind, bring incredible joy and excitement and enthusiasm for every single day because in every activity, every relationship, every endeavor, there's the opportunity for God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you've ever asked or imagined. So uh, God bless you. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.